Morning everyone and welcome back to the uh, channel. I'm here today at Barn Beyond the Marsh in East Yorkshire. Uh, it's the point where the River Derwent meets the River Ouse and there is this tidal barrage that normally stops the tide uh, going up into the Derwent when conditions uh, aren't so wet so that's the Derwent flowing into the ooze more of that uh, in a little while um, it's mid-February, the weather's quite pleasant, it's about 10 degrees, quite still, little bits of drizzle, um, so we've travelled west from the main road and I'm parked in the car park of the Actual Environment Agency uh, Barrage Facility. Um, it's a nice little car park, there's toilets, and there's a nice circular walk heads out from here. So, to start with, I'm heading back the way I've just come. Uh, the roads just across the fields there. But we're heading back east uh, along the banks of the River Ouse as it flows uh, towards the sea. It's about 50 miles away, something like that. Uh, I think the Derwent, as I say, has just joined a little bit further down. I think the River Rare still has to join. Eventually, the River Trent joins to form the Humber. And I've probably mentioned it before. In those two rivers, the Ouse and the Trent, I don't know what the actual figure is, but it must be about a quarter of England waters flow into it, maybe not as much as that, I don't know, but it's a huge piece of England uh, stream by the River Humber. So the walk, we go along the banks here, and then forget the name of the next village, and as far as the next village, turn in land, basically cut across the piece of land uh, that separates the two rivers and then pick up the Derwent north of uh, Barnby on the marsh and then walk back down the side of the Derwent uh, to Barnby on the marsh I should have read the board in the, the info board in the car park but I didn't. But my understanding is um, the Lower Derwent Valley, the barrage stops the tide uh, from going in. So it keeps the salt water or the brackish water out. I think this allows Yorkshire water to take water from the River Derwent at their treatment plant uh, that we'll see later on. I think it also acts as a flood defence. As you can see this first part of the walk it's on the uh, the banking that's built at the side of the ooze uh, to protect the 
surrounding land and village uh, from flooding because the surrounding land is basically at the same level as the river. It's an interesting walk and I made a podcast about it when I first did my podcasts um, and I've decided to revisit some of those and video them uh, but I'll drop the link in the description for that one uh, but here we are, uh, Disused Railway I think, but I'll put the correct facts on the screen this was the Barnsley to Hull line and obviously closed quite some time ago uh, but quite a substantial bridge here across the river Bank. I'm sure it's Barnsley to Hull. It's somewhere in South Yorkshire to Hull. And I'll double check it when I get home. When I did the podcast, it was uh, it was about May. It was a gorgeous day, it was like summer, and all the spring flowers, and it was really pleasant. So we're at the bottom end of the Vale of York, I think, but I think the geology or geography term for this area is the Humber Head Levels huge area of, of flatland um, that drains into the River Humber. And I think the whole area suffered terrible floods in the 1960s. Uh, There's terrible floods in Holland, but I think also in this part of Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. What I mean it is as flat, treeless, hedgeless, um, expansive. Of, of nothing. Treeless, hedgeless expanse. Except there where the railway banking um, still runs. Obviously getting lower and lower. It's lovely to hear the birds singing now in the morning. It's um, Been quite mild recently for February, so the spring seems to be starting early. I hear a woodpecker. It must be in those trees on the opposite bank.
Drax Power Station there. It's at the biggest coal fired power station in Europe at one point. And an outlet there, which looks official, an environment agency type of place. This whole valley, if it's, if you could call it a valley down here, but it's just filled with coal fired power stations all the way up to Leeds. There was Kirk still actually in Leeds, Scotland Grange in Leeds, Ferry Bridge, which is now gone. Eggborough? I don't know, to be honest. Um, and Drax, which I think if I'm wrong is converted to um, biofuels and not coal I was once talking to a bloke who told me <laughs> that those things were a monstrosity and should be pulled down. Um, and he couldn't understand when we were on one of the biggest coal fields in Europe why we didn't just keep digging coal and spew it out of those things. I changed the subject before we got onto the earth being flat. Um, Survey boat. So survey on the side. Yep, it's not this track. It's just a little bit further. It's called Landing Lane. And the village, I couldn't remember the name of, is Aselby. I'll, I'll put it up on screen. Uh, but this is what keeps this entire area 20, 30 miles in each direction, I think. Uh, this is what keeps it farmland. Deep ditches and pumping stations. Again, tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, there you go. Um, forget the name of it but when I came last time in May April May the banks were just covered in it it's a very early flowering uh, spring flower I'll put the name up on the screen um, it's everywhere but as I say Please comment if I say anything that's absolute rubbish or if you've anything to add. Um, <coughs> but I think it was the was it the Romans that first started to drain this area for farming. And before that it was all
it was all just Finland, which is still apparent in some of the uh, some of the names. The most obvious is uh, Church Fenton, uh, about ten miles away. I think it was Kirk Fen Town. Uh, Yeah, being the is that the nose? It's now just Church Fenton. I do like this walk though, I really do. Not everybody's cup of tea, I don't think. But I mean, it does show the incredible. Here I go, Yorkshireman on the rampage. It does show the incredible diversity of the county. I was lucky enough to uh, to to be born in the High Pennines. To coastal plains, Yorkshire Worlds, North Yorkshire Moors, and then this vast area of flatness. It is amazing. There are spring flowers out, and I'm having a real such a bright morning for memory um, this comes out this time of year February I think through March, April and when I came last time, was it April, May the the banking was uh, I'll put on screen what it is I just forget at the moment but when I came last time the banks were just covering it Yeah, there's snowdrops, there's that one. It's, uh, it's lovely. And it is much lighter and, and, and brighter through the day. There was some getting higher in the sky. So here you can actually see the level of the, uh, the recent flooding. It's about a metre or so above the riverbank. Which would have put it a couple of metres almost above the, uh, above the surrounding farmland. tree and I don't think I said I think uh, the distance today I think it's about five six maybe seven miles I'm not sure uh, and there's no rush except that the car park closes at uh, 4 p.m. but it's only 11 30 so plenty of time and I was just thinking wouldn't it be nice if there was somewhere I could sit and have my lunch? <laughs> Look at that 
fantastic. I work on a weekend and uh, I keep threatening to uh, pack the job in, <laughs> not because I don't like it particularly, it's because I'm getting older and life's passing by at an incredibly quick pace. Um, but I do like it and I like the people I work with. Um, but I keep getting asked the same question, oh what would you do with your time, would you be bored? If I didn't have anything to do, I'm sorry, there's not a job in the world I don't think that I'd want to do. It could be better than this, unless it's those guys on the uh, survey boat, uh, which is, seems a pretty cool job to have. Anyway, I'm not at work for the next couple of weekends, so. Uh, Lovely spot. The path does carry on. I'll have to explore that at some point in the future. But for now, I'm heading away from the river and uh, up towards the village. So we're just walking away from the river and uh, in the distance you should be able to see the, uh, I think it's called the Oos Bridge, goes over the M62. I'll probably cover it in one of my, sounds like it's got a police car or an ambulance going over it. It's quite an impressive structure, I'll probably cover it in one of my um, later videos where I go for a drive
still heading up towards Hasselby village but I just wanted to bring you some good news a new hedge has been planted but what a wonderful thing this is to do whoever planted it will be leaving a legacy that could last for hundreds and hundreds of years that was good to stop and look back at the view of the power station if there is such a thing Good thumbnail shot that though. Just making my way through the village. Uh, come in one side and uh, go out the other. I don't really like filming too much around people's homes, but it does have a village pub. is the way we came in and Bambi on the mouse she's down there and it does have a parish council notice board with not a lot of it there's the pub and of course as every village in the nation has Memorial. I have tried to uh, look into it, but my family, about three or four generations back, were from this area. And there's some of them on that memorial, but I've never been able to. Whether they're my relatives, it's just a strange coincidence um, because it's not such a common name. Anyway, I'll see you at the end of the village. Huh. Not seen one of these before. A winter services. Winter Services Weather Station and an ad for the Love is Bigger Festival at Selby Abbey on the 25th of August. Just about to leave the village and we go up um, that track there. I just wanted to show you this. It took me ages to work out what it was. Uh, first time I saw it. Bit of a clue there. It's the old level crossing of the railway that we saw earlier, uh, where the bridge came down. When it came down, to here. Uh, still in pretty good condition I suppose. Can't make out the 
United. Looks like it's serial numbers. Don't know which level crossing it was. A Selby level crossing, I guess. But I'll put it on the. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. Like I said, pretty flat and entirely human made. I'm guessing it would be pools and lagoons and fenland and little bits of scrub and forest. None of the drainage was here. Quite hard going along here, I have to say. I think the path goes diagonally across that ploughed field. Um, but I think I'll follow this little track to the end and then turn right up on the edge. and pick up the path in the top corner of the field. I've taken what you might call a, a long cut as opposed to a short cut and um, as I say the path should have come straight across there but being honest by the middle of February I start to tire a little bit of muddy fields so I'll try to avoid them where I can. I think we've avoided a lot of it. Anyhow, corner of the field's coming up. There's a path there. It takes us back to the uh, river deal went. But hopefully the paths will be fine again. Because we'll be up on the bank. I think I said the road across there was the main road from Selby to Hull earlier. I think I was a little bit sleepy when I set off. It's the A63 that runs from uh, Leeds to Hull. A lot of it's been superseded by the M62 motorway um, but you can still mostly drive to Hull on 
It's an old-fashioned day road. If you, if you choose. And I think this is uh, a grass called Yorkshire Fog. Uh, as you can see, it's quite tall. It has a purple tinge to it. Um, obviously, this is the last year's that's dried out. It's very pretty. Anyhow, we're nearly at the entrance to the, the water treatment place. Um, you can go. We go left down the Derwent. You go right up the Derwent to take you Stamford Bridge, Moulton, Yorkshire Walls. Left to go to its confluence with the Ouse. Um, you can go on the left or right bank and I've discovered that I prefer the right, so we'll, we'll cross the road bridge and then head back to Barnby on the marsh. As I say, I do prefer the other side, so make this little bit of a diversion and I have to say it's suddenly got a whole lot darker it must be about one-ish or something now and the forecast um, was for heavy rain uh, in the afternoon this is Lofsom Bridge um, I'll put some details about it on screen. Absolutely love these steps. The most ornate steps for a bridge in the middle of nowhere that I've ever come across. It's quite high, the river. Oh, one of these. Some sort of Spanish Inquisition. Anyhow, we've nearly done. Just a hopefully pleasant stroll along the uh, banks of the 
quite high in the Derwent. Funny weather. Put my cagoule back on walking across the uh, the fields. I started to get a little warm. Um, I, sorry, I started to get a little cold. Uh, as soon as I put it on, I'm boiling again. Do they still call them cagoules? I don't think all the people I see yomping about the countryside in the 500 pound um, rain jackets and 200 pound trousers and 500 pound boots I don't think they call them cagoules but that's what we called them in the 1970s I'm sticking with it. It's a beautiful river. If ever you get a chance to to walk, you know, between here and Stamford Bridge, it's gorgeous. I'm afraid I'm gonna. Scare off a lot of geese by the looks of it. Sorry guys, I have to go this way. And I would go down there by the fence, but I'm sure you still run away, so... I did that. I feel a bit bad. the Lofton Bridge uh, pumping station where Yorkshire water I believe take drinking water from the river I guess it must get processed that's the same company of course that pump huge amounts of raw sewage into our rivers each year Figure that one out. I'm guessing this river has special dispensation. Infrastructure keeping water out of the surrounding land. I think that's uh, Hemingbrough in the distance.
back at Barn Beyond the Marsh now, it's on the left bank. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the walk. I'm a little bit tired, ready for a cup of tea. Little way to go yet, probably about 20 minutes or so. I can see the barrage ahead of me. I'll get me a barrage. Barrage. Let me know in the comments. Barrage or oh, barrage. I think this is now the grounds of the of the barrage. It's lovely in summer. You come and have a picnic on the banks of the river. It's, it's delightful. It's not too bad on this February afternoon. Wherever you just seem to rise up a little, the wind catches you. As soon as you drop down again, it's, uh, it's quite pleasant. That's the car park over there, uh, just behind the pontoon. I guess that's what the red lights are for. All boats must stop at the pontoon and report to the lock keeper before proceeding to the lock. No recreational water activities, no recreational water activities allowed beyond this point. And there is said pontoon. The lock gates, I think they were open this morning and they're still open now. And the day I went out into the ooze. There you go. Bambi on the marsh wetlands. Lapwing otter. Barnell. The story of uh, Bambi on the Marsh and Wellands. Here's what you can see. The 
if you know what you're doing. I did read somewhere that uh, um, one last information part for those that like them. I know what I do in the valley. I might read that one myself. Ospreys was the bird I was trying to think of. I've done. Read somewhere that ospreys have been seen in the Lower Derwent Valley. There you go, that's the first river confluence in Yorkshire that we've done on the channel. I see that uh, this bit lowers to stop the river. Oh, it's, that's a bit called the barrage, Gareth. <laughs> to stop the river flowing in. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you did enjoy the video, do give it a like, big thumbs up. And if you enjoyed this kind of content, consider subscribing. Every single one of you that does subscribe does help. And if you've got any comments about today, or the channel in general, then drop them below. But for now, thanks again for watching, and I'll say cheerio. I just found this in the car park when I got back. Um, so a little bit of additional footage uh, for all the rubbish that I've spoken about the barrage during the video. There's the actual explanation. Pretty much as I said actually, it's to stop salt water getting into the Derwent and contaminating it so Yorkshire Water could take water from the river and it also manages the levels of the river hose preventing very high tides apart from backing up into the Derwent And it also has a lot of mechanism so boats can pass between the two rivers safely. And the nice place to have a picnic.